All right, so we want to prove a bunch of axioms. So let's see here. By the axioms. Um, so all of these, a, all parts of these, A, B, C, and D, these all use X, C, X not equal to zero. Um, so we're just going to use the same X for all of these. So by the axioms, there exists a multiplicative identity one, and there exists some multiplicative inverse one over X, which is the inverse of X. And that exists because X is not zero in this case. Okay, so for part A, XY equals XZ, well, what we can do is if these two things are equal, then multiplying on the left by one over X has no effect. You know what, just, I'm gonna write this as X inverse XY equals X inverse XZ. And X inverse times X equals one. So this is one times Y equals one times Z. And so Y equals Z. Okay, um, let's see here, letting z equal 1 in a yields b, because if you let a equals 1, then the statement of, if you let, if you let z equals 1, then the statement of a goes from x, y equals, basically a becomes b if you let z equal 1. Okay. What about C? Um, for C, XY equals one, then again, we'll multiply on the left by the inverse. And then the X inverse and the X on the left side cancel and we're end up, we end up with Y. So Y equals X inverse. Okay. For D, we know by definition that if you take if you take x inverse and you multiply by the inverse of x inverse then you get 1 because that's what it means to be the inverse of x inverse it means if you multiply it by x inverse then you get 1 so what we can do is we can take this and take this equation and multiply both sides by x and we get x times x inverse times x inverse inverse equals x times 1 which implies that well on the left hand side all we're left with is x inverse inverse and on the right hand side we're left with x and there we go that's all there is to it